a bad example that welds broken oh this whole thing's separating my name is jeff you're watching ice machine 411 today i want to talk to you about evaporator separation what to look for why it matters and how to avoid it i got called out i apologize for the lighting this light is broken anyways i got called out to work on this isomatic ice machine it is an ICE 320 the evaporator is on the left hand side instead of the front the only other one that I know of off the top of my head that has the evaporator on the side would be the Scotsman but it's usually on the right hand side so evaporator separation this is a great example or a bad example of what it looks like these slats the top three are pushing out and separated from the back wall. So you can see that weld along the back wall. Evaporator separation isn't always as bad as this. Sometimes it can be lighter. Uh, I've noticed on these particular models that the bottom left and right corners, like this one right here, are usually the first to go. And in this case, just like I was saying, the bottom left corner is separated and then as you get over to the right hand side it uh it looks like those welds are still solid right and then on this one welds are solid as we go over to this side uh let's see that's almost broken all the way through but it looks like the weld is still connected that one is broken all the way through you can see the light in the middle that one almost or partially and then as you get down to this side it looks like that weld is solid and connected now i'm using a flashlight because it helps to see the light coming through where that weld should be so like this one right here the cell right above the flashlight is that that welds broken now that we've covered what evaporator separation looks like let's go over why it matters and why it causes ice machines to fail to harvest the ice it'll still make the ice just fine but when it's time to harvest the ice the ice doesn't want to fall from the evaporator back to this machine this machine uses a harvest assist motor which is that guy right there it has a rod called the harvest assist rod which is right there in the middle that rod will come from inside and push out on the back of the ice sheet and the ice sheet will come forward and fall some machines use the harvest assist rod some machines these horizontal slats are at a slight angle so they slip forward and fall off for both of those scenarios, look at those top ones are all loose too. Oh, this whole thing's separating. Holy moly, look at that. Anyways, when the ice goes to slide forward, after it makes the ice, there's ice between this slat and the back wall. Probably about that much ice. That rod can't break that ice and then the evaporator doesn't get hot enough to melt that much ice fast enough to get the whole sheet to fall off as one and fall into the bin. Now, if this was the evaporator that was slanted with the evaporator separation, that ice that's formed between the horizontal slats in the back wall will keep it from sliding forward. And eventually the, mach the machines that have the slanted evaporators usually have a timer. So it'll exceed that timer, whatever it is, three minutes, seven minutes if it's a water assisted harvest uh, but it'll run out of time and the machine will go off on error so that's why evaporator se separation is terrible oh and i just popped that one back in but it's going to pop right back out when the harvest assist rod comes forward to push the ice sheet off how do you avoid a situation like this how do you keep your evaporator from separation uh from separating couple uh, main thing being use the correct cleaner. 
used your nickel safe ice machine descaler for nickel uh, coated evaporators. Use your metal safe in instances where you need to use metal safe. Usually flakers, nuggets are, are gonna be metal safe. Not all models, obviously check your particular manufacturer. Just staying up on your preventative maintenance is probably the main thing. Unfortunately, as these machines get old, the freezing and warming of the evaporator so many times it's, it's inevitable you're going to get some evaporator separation this machine is actually oh what is that 13 years old or something so for isomatic and evaporator separation issues i think 13 years is, is a pretty good lifespan for this evaporator unfortunately we've seen some failing at the six seven year uh, mark even with proper preventative maintenance so uh, preventative maintenance isn't always a guarantee to solve your issue sometimes it could just be a, a manufacturer issue bonus topic let's talk about how to fix it to fix this issue uh yeah there's at least one video on youtube that this guy uses like a flathead screwdriver and he like punches the plates into place and Sure, he might have got it to work for uh, maybe, I don't know, some, some period of time, but it's not, a, it's not a for sure fix. The way to fix it is to replace the evaporator. Now, these evaporators are expensive. I'm not sure exactly how expensive this particular evaporator would be, but call it 600 bucks around there. And then to replace it, you'd have to recover the refrigerant, unweld here and here, uh, there's a bunch of screws uh, it's hiding back there, like that screw. There's several of them here, several of them there. And then you remove the evaporator, put the new one in place, replace the filter dryer, and get it back up and going. All told, that repair and replacement cost would probably come out to at least $1,000. So when you get into the $1,000 range, with a machine that's pushing 13, 14 years old, you're gonna wanna start weighing your options about replacing the equipment opposed to repairing. If the machine's in really, really, really good condition and uh, you wanna kind of run the risk of, you know, is a $300 water pump gonna go out? Is a you know, $300 condenser fan motor gonna go out? Is the compressor gonna go out, which would be another thousand dollars give or take uh, do you want to repair it or do you want to replace it and that's just kind of one of those things that it's a it's a personal call I I try to stay out of those decision making processes because uh, if I say repair it 99% of the time it's gonna break if I say repair it uh, or excuse me if I say replace it maybe the machine would have uh, lasted for another three four years who knows so that's just kind of an overview of ice machine evaporator separation, what it is, what to look for, how to avoid it, how to fix it. And uh, I hope you found this video enjoyable. I appreciate you all watching all the way to the end. Support the channel on Patreon, become a channel member, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.